I believe in the sun. I believe in the sun even when it is not shining. If ever there was a year we needed Advent, this is the year. We hardly know how to describe the year we've lived through. We hesitate to reflect on all the mess around us in 2020. All we know is that nothing seems right. Nothing seems like it used to be. We need Advent. The prophet Isaiah cried out for us, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down to make your name known so that the nations might tremble at your presence. So tear through the mess, God, and come down to us again. We long to be your people, a people of hope. We light this first candle as a sign of our hope. Hope that you can meet us even in the mess of our world. Hope that you will still see us 
though we feel we are lost in the rubble. Let this light be the guide that brings us to Emmanuel once more. O come, O come, Emmanuel. As we are reminded of the HIV epidemic that has devastated so many lives across the world, we know that we must persevere and keep the light on HIV. As we do this, we are also reminded that you are our God. In the midst of crisis, we turn to you and light this candle as a reminder that our hope is in you. You're encouraged to light your candles at home. We light the second candle in remembrance of the millions of people who have died of AIDS-related conditions. We especially remember those who have died in our midst, our fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, friends, colleagues, employees, and neighbors. In many cases, we may not even have known the cause of their death. We light the third candle for the millions of people in our world who are living with HIV. We specifically also light this candle for those of us in this community who are living with HIV and their loved ones. We light the fourth candle to keep the light on HIV, especially for those of us who have become weary of the topic and even more so for those of us who still think that HIV is not the concern of the faith community. Let us continue to live life and work to bring hope and reconciliation to a world with HIV. Now, would you bow your hearts with me in a word of opening prayer? Holy One, we believe in the sun even when it's not shining. We thank you for the glimpses that we catch, the glimpses of the gift of your untiring hope, even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle, even when our view is obscured by the clouds of doubt. Ignite the flame of hope within us that we might glow with its brilliance from the inside out. It is in your blessed name we pray. Amen. Welcome to worship.
Today's first scripture reading comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 5. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from God's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up and every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level and the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together. For the mouth of God has spoken. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 through 15. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, a voice of one calling in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make the paths straight. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the river Jordan. John wore clothing made of camel hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open, and the Spirit descended on him in the form of a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness for forty days being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. May God bless the reading and hearing of these words. At age 61, Grace found out that she was HIV positive. She said, I was shocked to the core that I had, because I had been celibate for many years. And for a long time, I rehashed in my mind all the people I had dated. Who could have transferred this to me? But then I decided enough was enough. And I had always been a very smart and intelligent woman. And despite really under the secondary infection of meningitis and a viral load almost of 800,000, I stood up and I took charge of my life. And I proved everyone wrong that HIV has not got me. I had told my children and a few good friends that HIV is not a death sentence. It has taught me how to live a fuller life and returning to things that I love. And in this strange body that I have, it has all its quirks and its aches and its pains, but it's also a vehicle for my spirit, and, and I can know that I can do the impossible. And in the end, it doesn't matter who gave me the virus. HIV became an enigma for me now, and I intend to be a beacon of hope in the future. On this world's 
AIDS Day commemoration at MCC Detroit and on this first day of Advent. We honor the God of hope who can reach down to us even in our confusion and when things are unexpected to show us the light of God's presence. Would you bow your hearts with me in a word of prayer? Gracious Creator, we say thank you for these weeks that we are engaged in as we look towards the marvelous light of the Christmas morning. Continue to be with us here in this worship service. Speak to and through us, and may we look towards you as always for our continued help and strength. It is in your blessed name we pray. Amen. I believe even when. That is an open statement that we are presenting to you to fill during these weeks of Advent as we begin a brand new preaching series entitled, I Believe Even When. Grace recognized that God was with her even when she received her HIV positive test results. And it threw her for a loop, and she was shocked. But if you put yourself into her position, who wouldn't be? We could continue to have, rattle, have it rattle around in our brains. Who gave this to me? How did this happen? What will I do next? But we heard from Grace's testimony how she would answer and finish that sentence. I believe even when... I believe that when I receive a positive test result and now live with HIV, it is not a death sentence. I believe that when my body has aches and pains, God is still good. I believe that when I deal with meningitis, God continues to smile upon me. She could be living a life of blame and shame. And you might say, who would blame her? But she had a different hope that she was clinging to that helped her see her life as a vehicle, as a blessing to others as she lives with HIV. So how in the world do you recover when you receive news that is unexpected or there is a heavy heartache that comes to you? Many are comparing the spread of HIV to our current battle with the coronavirus. Only now there are many more people who have been affected. And yet there are still to be more people infected. And yet there are those who have succumbed to this illness. And yet there are people who will live with the lingering effects of the coronavirus. Where is the compassion and the help during those early years of HIV and AIDS in the crisis? You mean to tell me that it took a global pandemic to happen for us to begin to provide care and concern and comfort for one another? How do you discover hope when your heart is full of fear, hurt, and resentment? Both the prophet Isaiah and John the Baptist preached to this very dilemma to their audiences. They both were the ones calling in the wilderness in the darkness. And they asked and they told the people to come into the light of God's marvelous presence. Comfort, comfort my people, God told, told Isaiah. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for. Isaiah was called to proclaim hope and comfort to the people of God after they had been put into captivity. You might wonder, well, how did they get captured in the first place? It was the people of Israel and Judah, both the leaders and the people, who had left their God. They had abandoned the one who had created and cared for them. 
in exchange for being the rulers of their own lives. So God used the means of an enemy capturing them and conquering them in order to capture their attention. That they needed the message of repentance. Turn away from sin and turn back to me, your God. The spiritual conditions of the people hadn't improved much by the time John the Baptist had come along. John called the people to turn from sin and turn to God, and he told them to make a public sign of this commitment through the waters of baptism. Jesus, who had no sin to repent from, came to John and was baptized in front of all the people. And he did this as an example for them of how they could grow closer to God, how they could turn their hearts away from sin and to God, towards God. Repent and believe the good news, Jesus said, for the kingdom of God has come near. Comfort. Comfort my people. This was the message to the people during Isaiah's time. This was the message of to the people during John the Baptist and Jesus the Christ time. And it is still the message that God provides for us today. That God wants to comfort us. If you're able to hear the voice of God clearly in your heart, that tells you to keep no sin in your life, but to confess and repent, then you should also hear these soothing words, receive my comfort and my joy. Advent is the time in which we celebrate the transforming power of Christ in the world. A transformation of darkness into light. Jesus was not just the light of the world, but he was also the hope of the world. Those who had witnessed the marvelous light of Christ, they too were transformed from their own despair and darkness into the light of hope. What a wonderful message it is to know that God's desire is to comfort each of us in our darkness and despair. And this is the message that God wants to communicate to us today. You, when you have all access to hope, all the love, all the joy, all the peace you can contain, you have God. And once you are filled to your brim, with your hope will overflow. Your love will overflow. Your joy will overflow. And your peace will overflow. Isaiah and John call to the people to leave darkness and their words hold an important truth for us today. Now, we are an inclusive church here at MCC Detroit. And so I am not talking about what others may confuse as our sin, such as our sexual orientation or our gender identity and expression. Those are gifts from God that makes us shine brighter in the world. The darkness of sin that I am referring to are those things that may pull us away from God, that makes us say we are on the throne of our own lives, and it will have our hearts grow colder and darker. We must be in the daily practice of examining our hearts to find the places where God has been kept out. Each day, our hearts can accumulate bitterness, blame, shame, hatred, jealousy, greed, gluttony, lust over love, and the list goes on and on and on. If those are the things in which you cling to, identify those. Leave those behind and come back towards God. This is God's message of comfort to us today. 
There's no need to worry or to fear if we're going to succeed because this is the reason for the season. Because we have Christ, we will succeed. We honor Christ in the manger, but we also believe in the presence of Christ in our lives today. I believe even when. This open-ended statement is also a good litmus test to see how we are doing in our relationship with Christ. Is your relationship with Christ strong enough to say, no matter what, I believe even when I have a difficult day, a difficult month, a difficult year? Always remember, it is God's intention to comfort you. And the way to get to that comfort is to leave those things that make your heart grow cold and dark and return to the marvelous light of Christ. And it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. As we prepare for our time of prayer, I invite you to get into a comfortable position to rest. I invite you to get as quiet and still as you can. I invite you to take a deep breath and to get into a deep listening posture, perhaps with eyes closed or focused on the candle of hope, as we prepare together for a time of prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we reach out to you this day and welcome your presence with us. Be with us in this season of Advent as we eagerly await the coming of the Christ child. We need the hope, peace, love, and joy of the Advent journey. Help us to be able to feel your spirit with us during this time and to be appreciative of all of the blessings we have. Dear God, we lift up all those on our prayer list and those who have private prayers that only we know about. We are grateful for answers to prayers and to know that you are there, always there for us. As we live through this wave of the exhausting COVID epidemic, we lift up those whose health has been ravaged by this terrible virus and ask for your healing touch. Bless those today who mourn the loss of loved ones. We are grateful for the generous first responders and caregivers. Please bless the efforts to ready vaccines and treatments. May all those experiencing fear, anxiety, and financial hardship find peace and strength to make it through. Help us to learn from this epidemic experience and prevent this from happening again to future generations. Merciful God, we remember today that AIDS scourge is with us still. We grieve the millions of precious lives that have been lost to AIDS over the last four decades. We ask for your healing touch for all those who are living with HIV and AIDS. We are grateful for the treatments that help to manage this disease, and we ask your guidance to ensure these medications are available to all who need them throughout the world. Through all these trials, we know you are with us, and we are grateful. In your many names we pray. Our Creator, you know me. You know about my HIV AIDS. Holy is your name. Prince of Peace, in the storms of rejection. Mighty God, in the times of my weakness. Wonderful Counselor, in the times of my confusion. Everlasting Parent, in the times we feel alone. May your beloved community come. Where poverty will be no more where disease will be no more, where discrimination will be abolished, where justice will abound. May your will become transparent in our lives. 
a culture of intolerance and indifference, a culture of ignorance and fear, a culture of exploitation and destruction, a culture of xenophobia and homophobia. Set us free to experience your forgiveness for actions taken and not taken, for words said and not said, for limiting your possibilities within, for not forgiving self or others. Lead us from temptation to transformation, the temptation of war, the temptation of haughtiness, the temptation of ethnocentrism, the temptation of supremacy. Provide us with the bounty of health, the food pyramid, not the politics of food, acceptance, accessibility, and equality, love, hope, and faith, compassion, justice, and peace. You deserve glory and honor for loving me with my HIV AIDS, for making medication possible through research and science, for the experience of comfort from friends, family, and caregivers, for having prepared a place for me in Abba Father's home. Amen for the breath I breathe. Amen for the eternal breath. We want to say thank you to all of our partners in ministry for the ways in which you support us, but particularly financially at this time of the year. Please visit our website at mccdetroit.org for instructions on how to give your tithe and your offering either electronically or for the P.O. Box mailing address. Gracious God, we say thank you for these, your people, who have honored you by the giving of, of your gifts to them. So God, thank you and pray that you would multiply them so they would make a difference in the lives of others. In your blessed name we pray. Amen. At MCC Churches Worldwide, we celebrate an open communion table, which means you don't need to be a member of this church or of any church to celebrate communion with us. All you need is a willing heart to connect with your living and loving God. Sometimes we have things in our own hearts that keep us from approaching God and being in communion and fellowship. We ask you now to take those things to the God of your understanding and surrender them. Gracious God, we thank you because you have promised that if we confess our faults and our fears and our failures to you, that you will forgive and you will restore us to unity with you. We thank you and we claim it done in your wondrous name. Amen. Now let me tell you a beautiful story about the night in which Jesus was betrayed. He sat at table with his friends and in that meal, that he shared with them, he took bread. And he lifted the bread and he blessed it. And he broke it. And he said, take and eat, for this is my body, willingly broken for you. And as often as you eat this, remember me. Later in the meal, he took the cup and he brought the cup and blessed it. And he shared it with his friends and he said, take and drink. Drink deeply from this cup of my love, my blood poured out for you. And every time you do this, remember me. Please pray with me. God, we thank you for these gifts from the earth to represent your sacrificial giving. We ask you to bless these elements and make them what your children need in your wondrous name. Amen. 
we invite you now to consume the bread of life. and the cup of salvation. God, we thank you for these elements as they flow through our bodies, that they have become just what your children need to remind us that we have fellowship with you, an unbroken chain of love. And we thank you for it in the name of all that is love. Tuesday, December 1st, will be our Building Search Team meeting. For those of you who are interested in helping us find our next home, you are encouraged to attend. We'll be meeting on Zoom, and you can go to our website to find the link. On the following day, December 2nd, will be our Advent Bible study entitled Blue Christmas. We recognize this has been a challenging year for many of us, and how can we find hope? and hope and healing through the scriptures during this time of the year. Pastor Hattie Alexander Key will be leading that study, and that begins at 7 p.m. On Monday, December 2nd, will be our Survive to Thrive, and that will also meet on Zoom for those who are dealing with life-challenging illnesses or supporting others you are encouraged to attend. Our holiday service project is MCC Detroit's way of giving a little love to those within our community who have been either ill or they've been shut in their homes. And you can contribute any um, gift of financial support or we have a list of items that you can purchase. We're also looking for individuals who wouldn't mind delivering the gift baskets or the love care packages to those individuals. You can find information on our website and reach out to Pastor Hattie Alexander Key and Pastor Karen Dillman. Applications for our diaconate are now open. You can go to our website as well and download the application to fill it out. Lastly, those who are viewing this recording on a Sunday morning, you are encouraged to join us for our Sunday social hour on the Zoom platform. It's a great time to connect with one another, share your thoughts on this worship service, and to give encouragement to your sisters and your brothers. Now I invite you in a word of benediction. Would you please bow your hearts with me? While we wait for justice, but we do not wait to work for change. While we wait to be restored in our health, but we do not wait 
to work to heal. While we wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. While we wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. And so, my friends, like bells ringing out the news that the sun still shines even on cloudy days, go fill the night that, we, that is full of sadness with messages of hope. Go into your lives humming the tunes that keep hope alive in your spirit and that spur you on to do the work of justice and reconciliation. Raise your voices and repeat after me, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. In Christ's name we pray.